Now off this little intersection here, so there's a street that goes down there and there. Where I'm standing is an intersection, which I'll turn slowly around. And it's really a dead end, because up at the end of that street, behind that old American car to the left, is the end of Emmanuel Nof. It's only four houses long, but this is my street right here in the middle of the German colony. And it's um, the German colony because the German Templars came and founded this whole area about a hundred years ago, waiting for the Messiah to come. This is an old German house on the bottom, which has been the last three stories put up here this past now, I was wandering around this neighborhood about five years ago. I know it fairly well because my dear friend Leslie used to live down the street, just at the end of that row of houses, beyond where the balcony is sticking out there. Leslie lived there for a number of years where the truck is parked. And I was wandering around here looking at the old neighborhood, and I looked up at this wall, and I saw that balcony. And I said, I want to live someplace where I'll see that thing every single morning when I go out. So no matter what my mood is, I'll feel good when I see the world. Now that's just great, because that is a blank wall which faces onto this very nice little garden. And the lady who lives in this house asked permission from the municip municipality to build a balcony, and they refused her, so she had this painted on instead. And I think that's a great way of dealing with bureaucracy. Now we're here on Saturday, April 29th in Emmanuel Noach. Let's walk ourselves up the street here. The street, see to the left, there's another gate. That little uh, triangular pointed house started off as a chicken coop in the backyard of somebody about 35 years ago. Then the chicken coop turned into a little storeroom. The storeroom turned into a garage. And the garage got a little bigger and somebody lived in it. And then three years ago it was sold for $70,000 and some creeps put in another story and a half, and now the building has stopped because they did it illegally. Those are my neighbors, and that house, hidden back there behind those trees in that garden, is number 13, Emmanuel Noah. That's where I lived for four years. This is the approach to my garden. The gate says in Hebrew, please close the gate, because people never do. There's the mailbox, which is actually for the newspapers, but the mailman puts the mail in there. The dog from next door comes and takes the mail out, spreads it all over the parking lot down there and therefore I got a mailbox a few months ago. You'll remember that Patrick, if Patrick ever sees this film. There, now can you see that it's slipping? Number 13, number 13, Manuel Noah Street. That's my mailbox on the right, two little stickers on it because there's lots of names here. This house, I wish I could get a big picture of it, is on, in the newspaper this week telling a story about Mordechai Emanuel Noah. Now this afternoon I'm having a surprise birthday party in this garden for Esther. Nomi, my downstairs neighbor, keeps the garden spiffy. She really takes good care of it, which is great, because somebody needs to be able to pay gardeners to deal with all that. Listen to those birds. We've got birds here all the time. I loved sleeping in this place. I love being here, except just behind my building, there's a boarding school for French kids, and they scream, oh, right through the night sometimes, as teenagers will do in French, which tends to be an echo chamber around my bedroom area, the far side of the house that keeps me awake. But Nomi, who has the downstairs here, never hears anything. She's got a grandchildren, so that's the slide for her grandchildren. She does pretty well with this garden. In a few hours, it, I hope it'll be full of people. This car that I just built this morning will be used by some of the kids to drive, and keep them from driving me crazy. Up those stairs over there is one of the ways to get to my downstairs room. That's the storeroom. Now under the basement, that's Nomi's kitchen in there. I think the whole house is probably too dark to film inside, which is a real pity, because we'll see how far we can go with the light that's available. Um, is it too dark? See, this is Nomi's downstairs room. I'm going up to the ceiling it's, oh, a good five meters from the center of the floor right up to the ceiling. This was the main room of the house 100 years ago, built by the Germans, but using the Arabic style. So you can see there's a lot of arches, very thick walls. All of my rooms upstairs are even much darker than this. They're much, much smaller and all domed. This is the only room in, the, in Nomi's apartment that I can really show you because everything else is just far too dark. 
but believe me, it's very cool in here. And since the weather outside is about 30 degrees today, I'm feeling deliciously cool. I'd go put on a sweater to sit inside here. But I'm just using her house to make my popcorn in for the party and to get things prepared. See, it's going to be too dark. You can't even see down into her bedroom there. It probably won't show very well at all. This room is my favorite. It's very small. It's like some of those medieval French prisons that we've seen. The windows, the walls are so deep and are these tiny little windows, deeply, deeply set, cut overly into the walls. And each one, with all the stuff she's put in, is something like, it's like a museum piece. Oh dear, it's far too dark, isn't it? Just an extraordinarily architected house. And then to go out the front door, well, just look at those floor tiles. It's almost like one of your wonderful Belgians, like Bosch. The whole house, all the way up, three stories, has these mad floors. Oops, can't see it up there yet. Take you outside just for a second. Wonder where it was I stepped into that dog stuff. Bloody neighbors. And the whole house is for sale, but upstairs, which is Ulrich's studio, downstairs, which is the kitchen, and in the back, upstairs was my bedroom. This little cement structure up and down here is the toilet. Downstairs, outside, on the balcony, outside from the kitchen. Now, the party's been underway, and I'm a little bit flipped out, but here we are from above. I'm filming the party right through the garden. Just a little look at the kids. Thank God we've got a slide in the garden. Walter and Joanna. Look at all the people. Oh, yeah, it's a very nice little party. There's Esther. Let's see. You can get her in a little bit of a close up there. Because it's her 45th birthday. It's her daughter's hat blocking her. Very good. Okay, a little too cozy. Oh, Annette made it. Yay! There's Maxine. She's a little overweight these days. We'll turn like a zebra. There's little Nomi Helmer. Nomi Helmer! Yay! Yeah! People in this Larry. Larry the Alaskan fisherman. Oh, yes! What's the time? Shy. He keeps sheep. Him and his wife Linda, the veterinarian, they keep sheep out in the till with the Jerusalem Hills. Well, so do Shy. Here comes Linda, American veterinarian. Into the ostrich exporting business. Georgette, the artist. Yes, Georgette. Yes, Georgette. I'm learning how to work with a video. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Oh, oh are you, you guys are too close to focus. Linda, Linda. Hi. This is a video camera, and I, video I borrowed it. Yeah. I want to relax already. Oh, I don't know how to do this. You can do it. All right, I'll take it off you. Uh, look at Larry. Everybody. Um, okay. <laughs> what am I doing? Your beard looks nice. All right, you don't have to. I'll take it off. I'm very uncomfortable with it. And I'll do the best I can. You're doing just fine. I should take pictures of me. Because, do you want me to take a picture of you? No, I'm doing it myself. Want to mingle? The kid just broke a balloon. I'm mingling. I think it's maybe too close. I have no idea what it looks like. It's Leia Helmer. Look at the Can you see this thing? It makes it rain. What is it? Automatic focus. That's Leia And I'm looking at Barbara. I already got you when you weren't looking from up above. I was looking at Chris. Yeah, it's nice. And that's Moshe Helner and Walter. So we'll be back to you tell you. Moshe Helner, you look so hungry. Moshe. Moshe, you look hungry. Moshe. Moshe, look over here. I borrowed a machine. Moshe Helner, you are not smoking a <laughs> Well, Shah Helmet, this is for He's posterity. I'm going to send this to some... Oh, guys, that's it. I can put a I can take a picture of me and Nina. Fathers, I should go from I better be careful because it's... Oh, uh, I've got it clipped around my hand. Thank you very much. Very noisy in here. I want to get Natanael L on camera. That's right. You're supposed to find the popcorn. Oh, this is good. Natanael. L. He's a movie star. 
with a bowl full of popcorn. He's an eating star. He's advertising. Right, maybe I can get everybody at once if I go back far enough if I don't break my leg and my arm. And it's morning. It's early Wednesday morning. Sunrise. From the window of the bedroom that I'm sweeping in at Dua de Dan's house. I'm looking east. There's the sun peeking over the hills of Jordan. Across the Jordan Valley. Rising in the east. The first peak is called Azaria. Bethany. This first tall tower is on the Mount of Olives. The second one is Augusta Victoria Hospital, which I told you about you've seen before. The third one, to the far left, just before the trees, is Mount Scopus, the university. Can't quite see my house clearly from here. Let's go look at Jerusalem from the front balcony. There's the sun. Rises over. Not a bad one, not a bad one this morning. It's a little early, but this is the sunrise. So we're just going to pan Jerusalem, and we're going to come back a little bit later and take you through this whole city. This is Jerusalem, the morning of its 41st Independence Day of the State of Israel. It's Mount Zion there ahead of us. Beyond Mount Zion, the last towers and churches of the old city of Jerusalem. Across the valley of Ge Ben Hinnom, Gehenna. Yeah. There's the famous King David, which the British used as a headquarters and which the Israeli terrorists, the Jewish terrorists, blew up in 1947 or 46, I think, in the modern city of West Jerusalem. All those new buildings are and virtually all the new hotels. Those funky high rises. The furthest high rise on the left is an apartment building. We couldn't stop the construction of that one. Good morning, Jerusalem. All this is being shot from the house. Can you see the Mormons straight there? This is being shot from the house, the house of the Uruguay in Abu Tor. Used to be a half Israeli, half Arab village. There's the Mormon University and a clump of trees just middle way. Can't uh uh, midway on the middle row of the Mormon University over the clump through the house of Gila into the studio. It's an artist's studio. You can't smell it, but otherwise you'd know that she works mostly in oils, although she's doing a lot of collages. A bit of yoga on the floor. Notice the tiles, these old houses and these wonderful floors. Collages is her main thing these years. Although she's got some wonderful light and space paintings from our early years in Jerusalem when we all met when we lived in the old city. The collage, this one's pretty interesting. And then into the main room where Madame lives. Good morning, Giula. No, 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 don't do this now. Guys, that was about 20 to 6. It's more like 9 o'clock now. And what we have here is ridge and valley and ridge and valley and ridge and valley and ridge. And no more valleys are visible. What you have to understand when you look at a thing like this is that when Jerusalem was a divided city, the ridges and the valleys were in different hands. So the ridge on the left with all the modern buildings was west of Jerusalem, Israeli. This valley was no man's land. The buildings with red roofs on the left were in, in Israel. The old city walls on the right were in Jordan. And in between was no man's land that was mined. This mountain here ahead of us is Mount Zion. Half of it was in Jordan, the far half that we can't see. And the towers in the foreground 
were in Israel, because the valley down here was Jordan. So there's a road that was built actually when the Pope came to visit in 1964 that goes right around, so you can see it going right around there and up the mountain that was built for the Pope. Otherwise, it was just a dirt road. And this was Jordan down here. Oops. Wrong way. That valley was Jordan. The Golden Dome, of course, was in Jordan. And as for the, the ridge of far mountains behind, Mount Spokus and French, Mount Valley, that's it. And all of that was Jordan down to the desert. Now what's going on, all these cities united, the Mount Scopus, the furthest left ridge, is very Jewish, very Israeli. The right one, Mount of Olives, and Augusta Victoria there in the center, is divided half and half. I live in a place that's basically Palestinian. I come down through East Jerusalem, mostly through Palestinian territory. <sighs> Arab villages, Arab neighborhoods. Coming around the old city walls every couple hundred meters, changes the character, the demographic character of where you are till you get to about Mount Zion where it's almost completely securely Israeli so you can drive along there safely and everything else that's visible is fairly safe these days except down here in this neighborhood of Abu Tor if we follow a little bit to the right the houses just out of sight beyond this apartment block are Arab houses there have been a lot of troubles in this neighborhood as well. All border places, all split villages, all split towns seem to be quite problematic. Down here in the valley, you see kind of an acoustic shell set up there. This is the valley of Gibbon Hinnom. That was the Sultan's pool at some point. And that is where a lot of festivals, music festivals are held. Leonard Bernstein conducts down there. Leonard Cohen sings down there. Uh, what's his name? Um, okay. Are you much thinner than you were in LA? Oh my God, I'm six kilos lighter. I wonder if this is recording. No, this is just from this angle. I suppose I can tell. Wait, let me scratch my nose. Turn the camera off a minute. My nose is really itching. <laughs> You're allowed to scratch on camera. But then there's no way I can get in this. Well, Maxine can film us. No, Maxine, you come back here. No, I'm not filming. So. But Maxine is no daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get behind this camera and get... I haven't got any of me with Esther. Oh, so what do you... Okay, can we get some wet laundry? This is a new, uh, a new, uh, phase in life of getting used to yourself on video. <laughs> no, get closer. Be friends. We are. We are. Friends. We haven't told you yet. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> is there a microphone on this, too? So is there something you want to say? That's for posterity? Oh, God, I don't want to put it on film No, yet. no. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something you want to talk about that you've shared in common recently? <laughs> Maxine knows everything. I tell Maxine everything. Oh, you, you already mind. have. No, I was just wondering if she was a mind reader. Oh. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? I was thinking of sending this cassette to Paris, you <laughs> Oh, oh. Okay, we're going to have to erase that. Out to okay. Paris? To Just France. a friend in France. Yeah. Perhaps my parents, when are you going to France? In fact, this sounds quite. I'm, I'm going to. Could I'm going to be in Paris in August. I hope to be in France in August too. But then the end of I August. Might be, well, I won't be in Paris if I'm there on the south. The south. Is that it? You've had enough. Um. We better take some more in case we want to use that. The Sheila. No, the Sheila Caroline. Wait. That's it? Oh, sorry. oh gosh. It just oh, no, it's, it's just not in dirt, it's a doll stuff. It's a doll. Um, Hence, because it's the sh busiest time of the entire week in West Jerusalem. And the women are beginning to gather in about a half an hour at 1 o'clock when the demonstration officially starts. We'll see what's happening here. We're here early today, too. We're getting the final.
some of these people who are being very impolite to us.
אומרת מה שאני חושבת שאני מבינה שאנחנו מתגלגלים לאר של שפסת שפסת Saturday morning, July maybe 21st or 2nd, I'm not sure. Very, very hazy. Quite cool. It's about 7, no, it must be 8 o'clock in the morning. Over there where there's the fence, at the bottom of the fence, see this bottom pole right here? That was at the water's edge two years ago when they put the fence up. Beyond it, there's a bit of greenery. I don't know how visible that is which has freshwater pools going into it. That's where we normally used to go to swim, but the women I'm with today want to go according to the law, so we're staying on this side. This is the Judean Desert. What is on this side is no fresh water, just the Dead Sea, which is so full of chemicals and saline that it's virtually an oily, yucky, greasy thing. That's the three women, Nomi, television producer, Trudy, archaeologist, Irene, photographer. They're down there putting mud on themselves, I think, or slopping, sloshing around. I've already washed off in fresh water. Sorry for the bouncing. I'm trying to hold stuff. Yeah. If they go out a bit where it gets a little deeper, you'll see that they still look like they're sitting. Here they're actually sitting. But a little bit further out, you can float. You go out there with your hat, sunglasses, newspaper, cigarette. It's pity about the haze, because straight ahead of us, very, very clearly on most days, are the purple mountains of Moab in Jordan. It's only a few miles across. Foothills, well, the foothills, this is the Judean uh, desert hills, but what you see are not the steepest cliffs. Dry